Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're gonna do a video following the previous video that we just made um, for graphing transformations of a tan function. So again, um, a continuation of graphing the general tan function. And so today we're namely gonna look at the function y is equal to tan of bracket two, bracket x minus pi over two plus two, okay? Now, I've started by making this horizontal dashed line at y is equal to two. Now, the reason being, for the general tan function, y is equal to tan of x, we look for the zeros of our function. That is to say, whenever the function crosses our x-axis. Now, the analogy to that in this case is going to be the points where we cross this y is equal to 2 axis because of our vertical translation at the very end here of the plus 2. So our entire tan function was simply shifted up by 2 units um, vertically. Okay, so now our new zeros, our new zeros are going to be the points where we cross this line y is equal to 2. This is our new sinusoidal axis, the analogy to the tan function. And so let's look for those points first. Those points, um, those points crossing the line y is equal to 2. Okay, now those points are going to happen whenever this part of our function is equal to zero. Because if this entire term is equal to zero, then zero plus two gives us a y value of two, right? Y is equal to zero plus two. And so at all of those points, we get it. Um, smack dab on the line y is equal to two. Now I'll remind you, as a note, that tan of x is defined as the quotient of sine of x over cos of x, okay? So if we want to look for the points where this first gargantuan term is equal to zero, that is to say when 2 tan of 2 bracket x minus pi over 2 is equal to zero, we need only to look at when sine of this thing is equal to zero. Because whenever we have a fraction, if we set it equal to zero, all we need is the numerator to be equal to zero. Because zero over anything, understanding that the function is defined, so the denominator is in also zero. But as long as we don't have that, for a fraction to be equal to zero, all we need is the numerator to be equal to zero. And the numerator for the tan function is simply sine. Okay? So what we really need here is we need sine of this to be equal to zero. We can also get rid of the skitter multiple of the start, we can get rid of that too by simply dividing both sides by two. That makes our lives one step easier at least. So we get tan of two bracket x minus pi over two, like we had before is equal to zero. And now we can apply the idea that we just discussed. Tan of x equal to zero simply requires sine of x equal to zero. And analogously, tan of this stuff e equal to zero simply requires that sine of two bracket x minus pi over two be equal to zero. Okay, because again, zero over anything is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and solve this equation because it's not too, too horrible. Let's see the inverse sine of both sides to get rid of the sine and multiply the inverse sine of zero. That will get rid of the sine. And now we find ourselves with two bracket x minus five over two is equal to the inverse sine of zero. The inverse sine of zero, if you can imagine it on a unit circle, the sine of theta is the y coordinate. So we get it at zero, at pi, at two pi, at three pi, at four pi, and so on and so forth. So every integer multiple of pi, zero pi, one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, and so on and so forth. And so we get it at every integer multiple of pi, so that is to say pi times k, where k must be any element of the set of integers. So k is any integer, right? And pi k means any integer multiple pi, okay? So now we have our equation two bracket x minus pi over two is equal to pi times k. And so, like we always do, we can divide both sides by two, divide both sides by two, and so we find that x is equal to, sorry, x minus pi over two is equal to pi k over 2. Again, k being any element of the set of integers. And finally, to actually get a solution for x, 
we can add pi over 2 on both sides. And so x ends up being equal to pi over 2. Um, I'm going to write plus or minus for the simple fact that I want to highlight the idea that we can go in either direction along the x-axis and get more points that are crossing the line y is equal to 2. Okay? That's the only reason I'm moving plus or minus in here. It is redundant, it is not necessary, because we know that k being any element of the set of integers includes negative integers. So we don't need to add the, the minus here because we know that k could just be negative and then we would get negative multiples of pi over 2. However, just to highlight the idea that we can find points in either direction along the x-axis, I'm going to leave that in there just to highlight that idea. Okay? So here's our solution for all values of x producing points that are crossing the line of y is equal to 2. So let's go ahead and plot a few of those. The first one is going to be at pi over 2. And pi over 2 is, is a different color marker. Pi over 2 is in here. And then every integer multiple of pi over 2. So pi over 2 further in the positive x direction gets us to pi. And again, all these points are crossing the line y is equal to 2. That's why dotted or y dash this horizontal line exactly at y is equal to 2. And so again, we're increasing by integer multiples of pi over 2. And so again, another pi over 2 brings us here and here. And then we can work backwards as well, like so, jumping by integer multiples of pi over 2 in either direction along the way. Okay? Now, that's all of the points that are crossing y is equal to 2. The other points. Um, that are worth looking at are the values of x that produce those vertical asymptotes that are so um, that are so um, characterizing of tan functions. There are not that many functions that we typically look at that have an abundance of periodic vertical asymptotes, but the tan function does fit that bill. And so they are worth looking at. The vertical asymptotes of a function are when our denominator, denominator is equal to zero. And a reminder of the fact that the tan of x function is defined as sine of x over cos of x. And so the denominator of our function being equal to zero directly implies that the cos of x is equal to zero. Okay? Or in our case, the cos of this little mess is equal to zero. And so we're going to get our vertical asymptotes at the points where, again, we don't need tan to become zero, we need the denominator of our function, which is exactly cos of x. And so for this transform tan function, cos of this entire thing. So we're looking for the points where cos of 2 bracket x minus pi over 2 are equal to zero. Okay? Again, when we put zero, cos of our function um, is equal to zero. We can go ahead and solve this very similarly to how we solved our sine function. We're, we're going to take the inverse cosine of the sine to get rid of the cosine in here. So the inverse cos of both sides, the inverse cos gets rid of the regular cos. And so we're back to 2 bracket x minus pi over 2 is equal to the inverse cos of 0. Now, if you can imagine again on the unit circle, the cosine of theta is the x coordinate of our points on the unit circle, and so the x coordinate is 0 at pi over 2, and then again at 3 pi over 2, and then again at 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2, and so we get the inverse cos of 0 at pi over 2, and then we can add or subtract any integer multiple of pi. And so again, any integer multiple of pi, so k times pi, where k is any integer, okay? Because again, I know it seems maybe a little tricky to imagine that, but we're at pi over 2, but then every, remember, pi radians is one half of a circle. And so if you can imagine a unit circle, right, we get our first unit circle, we get our first cosine of theta is equal to 0 at pi over 2. Now, pi radians later, we're back at 0. Pi radians later, we're back at 0. Pi radians later, we're back at 0. Three. So any integer multiple of pi, our cosine is back at 0. 
And so we get any integer multiple of pi past pi over 2. And so again, we have to finish off the left side. And so two brackets, x minus pi over 2. So let's divide both sides by 2. Let's divide both sides by 2. And so x minus pi over 2, pull this up a bit, is equal to pi over 2 over 2. We know it's pi over 4. And then again, plus or minus pi k over 2. So any k multiple of pi over 2, let's say. That's one way to read it. And again, I'm writing plus or minus just to highlight the idea that when you get these vertical asymptotes at pi over 4, and then in either direction, in the positive or the negative direction along the x-axis, by increasing or decreasing by k multiples of pi over 2. And also, let's not forget to write that k has to be an integer. Okay? So now, let's go ahead and plot the first one. So pi over 4 is going to be our first vertical asymptote. Pi over 4 is, oh, sorry, we are not done. We are not done. For those of you that might have made this as a sudden mistake in the past, or if you're um, perhaps wondering where these silly mistakes might come up in these kinds of solutions, this is a great example. We still have x minus pi over 2, so let's go ahead and add pi over 2 to both sides to finally finish it off, where x is pi over 4 plus pi over 2. Pi over 4 plus pi over 2, getting our common denominator, is 3 pi over 4. And then the rest stays the same, plus pi k over 2, k being any integer. So the rest doesn't change, but pi over 4 plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 4. And so here are all of our vertical asymptotes, where x is 3 pi over 4 plus or minus any k multiple of pi over 2. So now let's go ahead and grab our first vertical asymptote at 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 is smack dab in the middle of pi over 2 and pi. And so, somewhere around here, we're going to get our first vertical asymptote. And then every k multiple, every integer multiple, since k is an integer, of pi over 2. And so, pi over 2 before 3 pi over 4 is right here. And then pi over 2 to the left. And so you might start to see a pattern here. The same way that y is equal to tan of x, the general tan function was periodic with a certain period. Every tan function is periodic. These are by nature periodic functions because the tan function is made up of two periodic functions. Sine and cos are both periodic. And so it is natural that the tan function is also periodic. And the period is the distance, again, between successive vertical asymptotes, and so how far are the vertical asymptotes apart? Well, they're pi over 2 apart, because every integer multiple of pi over 2 is a mu vertical asymptote, then they are exactly pi over 2 units apart. And so we can kind of write that in. So between every vertical asymptote is pi over 2, pi over 2, pi over 2, and so on and so forth in either direction. And so we can also write that it has a period of pi over 2. And we could have known that from the very beginning, looking at our function um, in its original form. The period is always pi over the b value. The b value is the horizontal stretch. And the period of any tan function is pi, again referencing back to our original video on graphing the original tan function, the original tan function has a period of pi, that means pi units between every successive vertical asymptote, and so the period of some tan function that has gone, that has undergone transformations, is that original period of pi over the b value, okay? And so this is perhaps one detail that is worth committing to memory as you go about when you've got these more complicated transformations on the tan function. But again, we get a period of pi over 2 because we get a b value, horizontal stretch of 2, which means one way to read that, and the way that I find most helpful, is to think of the horizontal stretch as 
a two for the B value means that we get through the function twice as fast, okay? The two means we get through the function twice as fast, so it's, it's squished twice as much. We get through it twice as fast, okay? And pi over B, since B is two, gives us the period of pi over two. So every pi over two we get a new asymptote, or if we're looking at the points crossing y equal two, every pi over two we get a new point that crosses that y equal two line, okay? And so I hope this was again helpful to illuminate the details of graphing tan functions under transformations, um, some of the ideas behind solving for triple asymptotes for important points that are crossing that kind of analogies of the sinusoidal axis with the tan function. I hope the algebra was easy enough to follow. If you guys have any comments, suggestions, please let me know. Any requests for YouTube videos are always appreciated. And thank you so much for watching.